Hey guys, Jafar here. A lot has changed since my first underground base design video, and many of you might be wondering if an underground base design is still possible in 2019, and the answer is yes. Let's get straight into what this base design looks like and how it functions, then later go into detail on how to build it. This underground base design really isn't a whole base design, since the underground technique can be used in many other base designs, including circle or square bases. This makes it very hard to almost impossible for a raider to identify an underground base. The whole point of an underground base design is to hide your loot in what the raiders think is just the foundations and to give the illusion that the loot is actually upstairs or somewhere else within the base. This underground base design uses the building's stability to let you enter and leave the underground part of your base, by allowing you to cover up the hole in the floor when logging off, but also letting you open it back up when logging in by breaking a twig wall, which is holding the ceiling in place. I will go into further detail on how this works in the build portion of this video. In the underground portion of your base, you can still place chests, auto turrets, shotgun traps and a few other useful items to help you down there. This is where you want to store your most important loot, like guns and resources. But I would also recommend that you have a chest room upstairs or above the underground floor to give the raiders some form of loot so they don't think the loot is hiding somewhere else. But just the best part of this underground technique is that it can be incorporated into many other base designs, such as a common circle or square base design. But you must remember the underground base design cannot be incorporated into an already built base. You must start the base build with an underground portion first and then build around it. So now you know what the underground part looks like and how it's accessed, let's get to building it. You first want to look for a flat or concave piece of land. This will help hide the underground portion of your base. If you build on a slope, one side of the base will appear to stick too far off the ground and might give away that the base has an underground section. For the square base, you want to start placing the initial foundations, which will be the underground section of the base. Next, place the real outside foundations half a block high from the underground foundations and begin to circle the base. Once you have the foundation circling the underground portion of your base, begin to place the half twig walls in one of the corners and destroy that foundation since it won't be used within the underground base to save on upkeep. Once you have done this, you can now place the ceilings over the foundations. You will now be left with a hole which will be the hole used to enter and exit the underground part of your base. Next, you'll want to put up walls and a ceiling around your base and leave a hole in the roof for you to put some stairs and later a hatch. This will let you expand your base in the future and will also add to the illusion that the loop might be further up in the base rather than down. The same will be done with the circle base design. You will start with the underground foundations and circle it with the real foundations half a block high. Now with the circle base, the stability will be a bit different and you'll want to place the half twig walls mirroring each other. Once mirrored, start placing the ceilings down in the order I've showed in the video and decide on where you'll want to get in and out of your underground base. This will mostly be determined from the stability of the first half twig walls you place down. So you will have to move those if you do not like where your hole is going to be. Once you have decided on the hole which will be your entrance and exit, place a half twig wall opposite of it to allow you to put a ceiling over the second hole. Now you have your main hole which will be used to enter and exit the underground base. To cover up this hole when logging off, you'll want to jump down inside your base and place a half twig wall near the hole to give it an additional stability allowing you to place down a ceiling and upgrade it to either stone, metal or armoured. When you log back in and want to leave the underground portion of your base, all you have to do is break the half twig wall and the ceiling will break due to low stability. Now it's about time to place the tool cupboard down. 
You'll want to hide it in a honeycomb or a separate room so the raiders don't gain access to your base too easily. Once you have the walls, ceilings, foundations and tool cupboard down, you're ready to start filling your base with chests and furnaces. The underground part can be filled with whatever you want and allows you to swap out traps for more storage space. It's up to you how you want it to look and feel, but I would recommend being smart about how you place your chests, since you only have limited space and if you're with many people it can get filled up quickly. That's why I suggest putting a lot of loot upstairs which you don't care about losing if you do get raided. This will help the raider think they got to your loot and can now leave with the goods. Also, don't forget about putting traps all throughout the underground part of your base. Don't put too many chests down and save space for some auto turrets or shotgun traps. This will be your last resort or backup if the raiders do manage to somehow find your underground section of the base. You want to make it so hard for them to go down there and get your loot. You want to make it so if they do fall down the hole, they're going to get sprayed at by an auto turret and a couple of shotgun traps. And you want to make sure the auto turret can shoot throughout the whole underground portion of the base since they might blow through any random ceiling to get down into the underground portion of the base. If you do think that you might be running low in storage space from the two designs I showed you, there is a simple fix to your problem. Just make the underground portion bigger when building the base. It's that simple. This underground technique can be incorporated into a massive or small base depending on your needs and the ability to sustain the base. The half twig wall which is being used to hold up the ceiling over the entrance and exit hole cannot be broken from the outside. Even if the raiders use a flamethrower, rockets or C4 directly above where the twig wall is, it will not take damage. This means you do not have to worry about the raiders accidentally destroying that twig wall and finding your underground base. It's also a good idea to rename sleeping bags to raid base, tent base or farm base to make it seem like you don't have much loot in the base. Since it's not going to really work if you incorporate it into a big base and have a sleeping bag saying tent base or farm base. I should also note that you cannot place a sleeping bag down in the underground section of the base. This means if you lock up your base while you or a friend are not underground to destroy that twig wall, you cannot destroy the ceiling, which will lead to you being locked out of your loot. There is a fix to this problem, but I would not recommend it since it has the ability to give away your underground secret if the raiders destroy the wrong wall. To implement this fix, all you have to do is extend the underground section of your base into what would appear like the honeycomb of the base. But instead of putting a ceiling on it which would block the bed placement, you can just leave it open. The problem is if the raiders decide to rocket or go through the side of the base and destroy the wall, it will be completely open to the underground section. So this is only recommended if you really need a sleeping bag to get to your underground loot or think you might forget and lock yourself out of your base. It would also be best if possible to upgrade your base to sheet metal or armored, not only for the extra protection and durability, but for the decay rate. If you do get offline raided and they destroy or take the contents out of the tool cupboard, your base will start to decay. A stone base will decay in 5 hours while a metal base will decay in 8 hours and an armored in 12. This will give you an extra 3 to 7 hours to log back in and get the resources necessary for the upkeep so your base and underground compartment doesn't decay and get exposed. Now you know how the underground technique works, you can now incorporate it into any base design which can support it or expand on the bases I have shown you today. Really, as long as your circle base is bigger or equal to 3 layers and your square base is larger than a 2x3, you can incorporate an underground section. Who's to say you still can't have a massive base and be a big clan and not just have a small underground section to hide your C4 and rockets while the rest of your loot is in crates upstairs? If you do get raided, you might lose some of your stuff, but you still keep the things that are most important to you. I hope this video has helped you with surviving in Rust and given you another way to mitigate offline raiders or big clans which you can't fight against. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.